My name is Angela Stewart. We would like to invite you to Faith University Christian Education class. The title of our lesson today is The Day of Atonement. Our scripture lessons will come from Leviticus 16, verses 1 through 16. I will read it in your hearing before I pray. And the word of the Lord reads, And the Lord spake unto Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron, when they offered before the Lord and died. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he come not at all times, into the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat, which is upon the ark, that he die not, for I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. Thus shall Aaron come into the holy place with a young bullet for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering, he shall put on the holy linen coat, and he shall have the linen breeches upon his flesh, and shall the linen mercury shall he be attired. These are holy garments, therefore shall he wash his flesh in water, and so put them on. And he shall take on the congregation of the children of Israel, two kids of the goats for a sin offering and one for a ram and one ram for a burnt offering. And Aaron shall offer his bullet of the sin offering, which is for him and make an atonement for himself and for his house. And he shall take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron shall cast lights up on the two goats, one for the Lord and the other for the scapegoat. And Aaron shall bring the goat up on the Lord for upon the Lord's lot fail and offer him for a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to make an atonement with him and let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. And Aaron shall bring the bullet of the sin offering, which is for himself and shall make an atonement for himself and for his house, and shall kill the bullet of the sin offering, which is for himself. And he shall take a censer full of burning coal of fire from, the, from off the altar and before the Lord, and his hands full of a sweet incense, beaten small, and bring it within the veil." And he shall put the incense upon the fire before the Lord, that the cloud of incense may cover the mercy seat that is upon the testimony that he die not. And he shall take of the blood of the bullet and sprinkle it with his finger upon the mercy seat eastward, and before the mercy seat shall he sprinkle of the blood with his finger seven times. Then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering that is for the people and bring his blood within the veil. And so with that blood, as he did the blood of the bullet and sprinkle it up on the mercy seat and before the mercy seat and he sh shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanliness of the children of israel and because of their transgressions and all their sins and so shall he do for the 
tabernacle of the congregation that remaineth among them in the midst of their uncleanliness. Amen for the word of God. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this day. God, we thank you for this lesson, the day of atonement, God. God, I pray that you would speak through me, God, as I have studied this lesson, God. God, I pray that someone will hear something, oh, Heavenly Father, that will help them along the way, God. God, we know that we need you, God. And God, we know that we need you to be in the midst of all that we go through, God. So, God, we trust you on today. And, God, we thank you. And we lean unto you, God, and not our own understanding, God. So, God, I ask again that you would bless me to uh, give a word, oh, Heavenly Father, that I studied this lesson for, with, God, that someone, oh, Heavenly Father, can be helped, O oh, Heavenly Father. In the precious and mighty and wonderful name of Jesus, I pray. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. On today, I will give a summary in reference to this lesson. And in this lesson, again, the title of our lesson is The Day of Atonement. And th uh, this was during the time of action uh, was 1445 BC. The place of action was Mount Sinai. Here in this lesson, we will learn that a number of holy days was instituted in the Mosaic Law, but the Day of Atonement or Yom Kippur is the most solemn and important holy day of the Jewish calendar. It was an annual time set aside aside for fasting. This was the day when Israel sought the divine forgiveness for their sins and their sins of the nation. This was nine days leading up to the Day of Atonement. It was beginning with the Rosh Hashanah, are called the Days of Ah. During this time, we see that the Jews tried to change his or her behavior and seek forgiveness for wrong for their wrongdoings against God and other human beings. In the end, the Jews hopes that they have been forgiven by God and they wanted to make sure that they did what they were supposed to because they wanted to be forgiven. I will begin uh, expanding on each verse, beginning with Leviticus 16 and 1. And the Lord of the word reads, and the word of the Lord reads, And the Lord spake unto Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron, when they offered before the Lord and died. Here we are given the date of the law concerning the day of atonement. This was after the death of the two sons of Aaron, the deaths of Nadab and Abihu was a warning that even the high priest must take great care when approaching the holy God. He must not take the God, he must not take God and his blessings for granted, but approach him with the proper humble attitude unlike Nadab and uh, Abihu which is what we have to do even on today. We have to make sure that when we approaching God, we have a humble spirit so God can, you know, bless us and God can forgive us in the name of Jesus. In verse 16, it, uh, it reads, And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he come not at all times into the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat, which is upon the ark, that he die not. For I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. Here God instructed Aaron to stay out of the holy place where the ark of the covenant rested with its cover known as the mercy seat. He could not go there whenever he wanted to or to whenever he wanted to, or he would die. God's reason for making this stipulation was because the room was very sacred. 
because the presence of God resided there in the tabernacle. So you could not enter any kind of way. No mortal sinner was able to enter into the presence of a holy God and survive. You had to be right when you re when you went in there. In verse 16 and 3, it reads, Thus shall Aaron come into the holy place with a young bullet for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. This was before the Day of Atonement was instituted, and we can find that in Leviticus 23, verses 27 and 28. He was preparing Aaron for the time when he was to come into the holy place or into the holy of the holies. But he was to come with the appropriate offerings of a young bullet for sin offering and a ram for burnt offering into the tabernacle court where sacrificial offerings were made. The sin offering was to cleanse Aaron and his family of their sins. The burnt offering was offered as an act of total submission and consecration since the entire offering was to be burned on the altar. And you can find that in Leviticus 6, Leviticus 1, verses 8 and 9. In verse 16 and 4, it reads, He shall put on the holy linen coat, and he shall the linen breeches up on his flesh and shall gird it with a linen girdle and with the linen metry shall he be attired. There are the holy garments. Therefore shall he wash his flesh in water and put them on. Here God gives instruction for how Aaron had to wear specific articles of clothing on that day it appears that contrary to the beautiful garments he wore when he performed his highly priestly duties among the people he was to wear very humble garments when coming before god on this day he was not to be dressed up in his rich garments that were designed for only him and we found that in Leviticus 8, verses 6 through 9. Neither was he to put on the ephod with the precious stones in it, but only the linen cloth, clothes which he wore like the common priest. And I found that in Leviticus 8 and 13. Even though these was not the full dress for the high priest, God said they were holy garments because they had been consecrated and set aside for God's use. Before putting the garments on, Aaron had to wash himself completely. And I, uh, as I was studying and I was looking at, you know, how he had to go before God, you know, and how the things was consecrated and set aside and it had to be used at a certain period. There are also clothing that is worn even on today that is only worn during certain times or during certain assignments that is being given for people in different leadership positions. In verse 16 and 5, in chapter 16 and 5, it reads, and he shall take of the congregation of the children of Israel two kids of the goats for a sin offering and one for a burnt offering. Once Aaron had prepared himself according to the Lord's instruction, and which was found in verse 4, Aaron was to bring two male goats for the people for a sin offering as well as a burnt offering. And this was found, uh, and this was offered on behalf of the people. A lot of this uh, repeated over and over what was supposed to take place 
This is why each verse is expanding and is repeating the same thing. 16 and 6 reads, Aaron shall offer his bullet of sin offering, which is for himself, and make atonement for himself and for his house. And here is an important distinction between the priestly ministries of Aaron and Jesus. Although serving as the high priest, Aaron still committed sin, and his office didn't protect him from that. Before he could offer sacrifice that would atone for the sin of the people, he first had to offer a sacrifice atone for his own sin. In contrast, Jesus, who is our great high priest, didn't have to offer a sacrifice for himself because he was sinless. And that was found in 2 Corinthians 5. 20 and 21, but offered himself as a sacrifice for all who believed. Jesus offered himself once, which was enough to remove the sin of everyone that believed in him. In 16 and 7, it reads, And he shall take the two goats and present them before the Lord, at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Here we see after sacrificing the bull, Aaron was then to cast lots in order to determine the purpose for each goat. He was to take them and present them to the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. He was to take them and present them to the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, which mean they belong to the Lord to do whatever he wanted to do with them. And we, we read this in verse 8 through 10 as well. In 16 and 8, it reads, And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, one for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat. Here the word cast lots refers to the way in the Old Testament that the Lord occasionally helped man to understand his will. We now have the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us with God's word. It directs and reveals his will for our lives, which is why we are not told to cast lots anymore. Aaron took the two goats to the Lord to do whatever he decided to do with them. It was no longer Aaron's decision. Aaron did not know which one of the goats would be for the Lord or which one would be designated for the purpose of the scapegoat. In 16 and 9 reads, And Aaron shall bring the goat up on which the Lord's lot fell and offer him a sin offering. Once Aaron cast lots, he was instructed to take the two goats before the Lord at the entrance of the tabernacle. This was to be sacrificed as a sin offering for the people. We saw that in verse 5. 16 and 10 reads, But the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to make atonement with him and to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. The lot that fell on the other goat became the scapegoat and was not to be sacrificed. God said the scapegoat was to be presented alive before the Lord to make atonement with him and to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness, symbolizing that it was taking the people's sin away with it. One of the goats had to be slain as a sign that God's justice for sin had been satisfied, and the other had to be sent away as a sign of remission or dismissing 
of sin by the mercy of God. 16 and 11 reads, And Aaron shall bring the bullet of sin offering, which is for himself, and shall make an atonement for himself and for his house, and shall kill the bullet of the sin offering, which is for himself, this verse was summarized in verses 6 through 10 and is now explained in greater details. And it began with after Aaron washing his body and putting on the special linen clothes, God said, Aaron shall bring the bullet of sin offering for which is for himself and shall make an atonement for his own sins, as well as those of his family. And before Aaron, the high priest, could make atonement for the people, he had to make sure that his own sins had been forgiven and those of his house uh, was covered. In verse 12, it reads, And he shall take a censer full of burning coals, of fire from off the altar before the Lord and his hands full of sweet incense beaten and bring it within the veil. Here at the Aaron sacrificing the bull, Aaron then took a censer full of burning coals from the fire of the Lord. This was found at the altar of the burnt offering in the tabernacle courtyard. A censer was a fire pan with a long handle. Verse 13 reads, And he shall put the incense up on the fire before the Lord, that the cloud of incense may cover the mercy seat. This is upon the testimony that he died not. The censer was taken before the Lord in the most holiest place, the Holy of the Holies, where it provided a cloud that covered the mercy seat on the ark. The smoke from the incense served as protection, guarding him from seeing God's divine protection. And that was found in Exodus 33 and 20, and also in 16 and 14. And I'm sorry, in Exodus 33 and 20, verse 16 and 14. And the he shall take of the blood of the bullet and sprinkle it with his finger upon the mercy seat eastward. And before the mercy seat shall he sprinkle of the blood with his finger seven times. Here the mercy seat was the lid that rested on top of the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark contained the two stones, tablets of the law, inscribed by the finger of God himself and represent the eternal moral of the law of God. And you find that in Deuteronomy 10, 1-5. And since all humans have violated the law, the righteousness of God demands death. And that was found in Ezekiel 18 and 20, and also in Romans 6 and 23. God provided the only means of atonement for his chosen people and for their reconciliation to him atoning Blood of the ark's cover, the mercy seat. In verse 15, it reads, Then shall he kill the goat of sin offering, that is for the people, and bring his blood within the veil, and to do with the blood as he did with the blood of the bullet, and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat. And before the mercy seat, after the high priest had sacrificed a bullet to cover or atone for his sins, he was to kill the goat of the sin offering. Then is for the 
that is for the people. After the high priest killed the goat that was set aside for the people's sin, he was to take the goat's blood and do the same thing with it that he did with the blood of the bullet. And that was found in verse 14, which meant he had to go into the Holy of the Holies again and sprinkle the blood from the goat over the mercy seat and the ground from the mer- and the ground in front of the mercy seat. Last verse 16, he shall make atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanliness of the children of Israel and because of the transgression of all their sins. Final verse 16 and 16, and it reads, He shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanliness of the children of Israel and because of their transgressions and all their sins, and so shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation, the remnant among them in the midst of the uncleanliness. Here the people were so sinful that even the divine holy place, the holy of the holies, had been polluted. Today God has sent his spirit up on his new covenant people, the church, and you find that in Acts chapter 2. And his spirit indwells believers, make indwell in believers, making them the temple of God. You can find that in 1 Corinthians 3 and 16, and also in chapter 16, 6, verse 19. His final dwelling with his people will occur in the new heavens and new earth. You can find that in Revelations 21, verses 1 through 4. Amen. We thank God for this lesson, the Day of Atonement. I pray that something was said in my delivering that was blessed by you on today. Uh, If you have, in my conclusion, uh, God forgives and His holy requirements are balanced perfectly in Leviticus 16. We see his forgiveness in his specific dwellings with dealings with Aaron, his allowance of the scapegoat, and his atoning provision for the high priest himself. But for the Christian, Jesus' death and resurrection fulfill the day of atonement rituals whereas the high priest had to offer a sacrifice for his own sins. Jesus was perfect, sinless, and he was undefiled. The high priest offered a sacrifice yearly. Jesus offered himself on the cross once and for all. When the Father sees the believer, he sees Jesus' righteousness. The high priest represented the people before God. Jesus, our high priest, stands before God, our advocate, interceding on our behalf. He, and because of him, we can enjoy direct access to God the Father. Amen. If you have any questions that you would like to ask in reference to this lesson, the Day of Atonement, you can email us at www.timbrellchurch.org. Before we end our lesson, we would like to give you the opportunity to give. We have three ways that you can give. Our first way that you can give is through Cash App, dollar sign, Timbrell Church, Inc., Again, that's Cash App, dollar sign, Timbrell Church, Inc. Our second way that you can give is through Givelify, and you will search for Timbrell Church. Our last way that you can give, you can go on our website at 
timbrailchurch.org. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this day. God, we thank you for this lesson, God. God, we thank you that we can come to you, God, because Jesus has already paid the price for us, God. God, we thank you, O Heavenly Father, what you're doing in our lives, God. God, we thank you, O Heavenly Father, for where you're taking us, God. We won't let nothing stop us, God, from moving forward, O Heavenly Father. We want to please you, God, in all of our ways, God. In the name of Jesus, God. God, I thank you, O Heavenly Father, how this lesson bless me, God. God, and I pray that it bless someone else, God. In the name of Jesus, God, for we know, O Heavenly Father, that no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper, God, because Jesus has already died on the cross, O Heavenly Father, for our sins, God. And therefore, we can come to you, God. In the name of Jesus, God, and we shall be forgiven, God. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you that we don't have to bring any burnt offerings, O Heavenly Father, to you, God. God, we can come to you with repentance, God, and be forgiven, God. God, I thank you for this opportunity that my bishop, P.J. Edmund, has given unto me, God, to teach this lesson on today, the Day of Atonement, God. God, we thank you in the precious and mighty and wonderful name of Jesus. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.